Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and tonight we are starting off in my sink and this isn't some place where I usually start Chemnitz videos, but I have a lot of leftovers. There's some nearly empty bottles that we we'll use in some projects. I've got some leftover mixed dye that I didn't use for another video and well, we're going to combine them all together in one pot to dye some yarn. Uh, and we've even got a leftover dye pot. In here we have uh, some remnants of, I think, a really neon yellow. But I don't expect that that hint of yellow is going to make a difference because this is a lot of gray and I think some intense iris. Um, and I'm going to move this away from my, or my water, or I guess move my water stream over so that way I can rinse things out into here. Now to this, this is where the risky part is going to come. This is some radioactive. Um, and we will peek at what the color is going to be um, as this goes on. But we are rinsing out various containers. And this bottle was stained yellow already. I don't think that that's from the radioactive. Um, this is blue. I think that this is a, this is like gunmetal or blue steel or something like that. Very navyish blue. All of these are, goodness, I think they're all Dharma and Jacquard acid dyes. It's a little bit of a lot of different colors. And here I am cleaning up. And I think right here we've got a little bit, this is some purple pop. And why not clean up directly into the dye pot? I think that this was just black. But whether or not it was true black or toner black, I don't remember. The videos this Leave No Dye Behind is from have not been published yet. So uh, later on, if you figure out what video it was and you want to come back and tag it in the comments, that would be fun. Okay, finally, oh dear, finally, I've got my base in. And I have no idea how much of this will come out versus is stained. I mean, that's not a ton of pigment, certainly not compared to what we have there. I am going to soak this, but it is fairly stained. I knew that that would happen. Uh, but now let's go dye our yarn. Now, I don't know what color this is. I know it's not going to be brown, but I want to take a moment and say browns aren't bad. Brown is a beautiful, beautiful color. And not just because my last name happens to be brown, but it is a color that I genuinely like and want to explore more in the future. But I know a lot of times people get nervous mixing a bunch of random colors together. Um, and granted, a lot of these had cool toned elements of like purple and blue and gray, but people can feel nervous because they don't want to end up with something super muddy. Muddy can be gorgeous. Um, but let's take, I could take a paper towel and sort of swatch and see, ooh, this is a pretty like bluish gray, sort of like a slate blue. Um, I'm slowly going to add some dry Knit Pick Stroll fingering weight yarn. Um, I folded the skein a little bit just in half um, and put the ends in first. Uh, and I'm just moving it to make sure that the yarn is well saturated uh, before I go in and add more. Um, I don't know if this will necessarily look quote dip dyed because it's not hot yet and there isn't, I don't think there's a ton of acid in here, but you never know. Some colors start striking really, really fast. This color is beautiful. The problem with these Leave No Dye Behind colorways and projects is that it's really hard to replicate because 
You don't know how much of all the different colors you had. I'm amazed with how blue this is. Uh, I did add, <laughs> oh goodness, I really hope I don't tangle this. There is a nylon zip tie on one of the ends at the bottom. I probably should have kept that up near the top where I was working, um, but I have that as an extra tie to help prevent tangles. But if by doing something like this, your yarn does feel tangled, please, please, please just wait for it to dry before you try to reorder it. It is a lot easier. And oof, you can see that we've got some tonal variation just from like the pot is not yet hot. We don't have any bubbles. There's barely any steam. Um, and the color balance is horrible right now. Um, but we've got a beautiful, it's almost like a periwinkle slate blue. Just variation in here. Just from those few moments of adding it in first. And so now, since the yarn was dry, I could not move it in the pot and we could end up having um, still a fairly even color, fairly even dip dyed feeling color. But I'm moving it to help um, the dye access the yarn. And now I'm going to stop because I'm probably on the verge of tangling things, even though zip ties work. They work and they help. But now I'm gonna just heat this up until the colors all absorb. Um, but this is so pretty and fun. My efforts to use up all the leftover dye that I have after days and weeks of dyeing yarn happened when I started my journey and it happened primarily for economical reasons. If I had leftover mixed food coloring, I wanted to save it because I knew like when you mix a bunch of food coloring together, it would break in fun, new, interesting ways. But also I didn't want to get rid of an ingredient that cost money. At the time, I didn't have a large budget for materials, and so I was dyeing like, you know, two, three to five grams of yarn at a time to try out different techniques and saving everything left over. And so it's evolved, and I still love doing it because I like seeing these surprise colorways. Uh, a lot of times I throw everything together in kettle dye, but sometimes we throw them together in many different ways. And some of these leftover dye yarns I love so much that I end up keeping for myself and they're true one of a kinds because it would be nearly impossible to replicate. I could get something close but it wouldn't be that same mixture and that same randomness all thrown together in one pot. But since this journey started from an economical reason for me and these days I have a lot of yarn at my disposal. Um, this is not only like my hobby and my passion, it is also my business. I am able to do these fun, one of a kind, random skeins of yarn because I have a place to go. But if you're a home dyer dyeing for yourself, you might not have spare yarn to use up in this way. So what can you do with these leftovers? Well, one thing that you can do is you can combine them or not, but store them. If you have little bottles or even old plastic takeout containers, as long as they don't have holes at the top, label them with what the color was and save it for another project. And look at that as like your paint collection of the things that you can use uh, for when you wanna create your next intentional colorway. Or, you know, if you want a dustier color, then have a tiny bit of radioactive leftover. Maybe that can help sort of dim a purple down a little bit or something like that. If I have like enough of the dye, I have stock solutions that I have stored that sometimes are leftovers from projects. And then I try to work them into other things that I want to create. So there's many things that you can do that are creative and fun uh, that don't necessarily involve um, deciding to make a whole skein a yarn mop, uh, which I absolutely love doing these techniques and I highly encourage you to do it. And also, if you're doing one of the yarn mops where you're wiping dye off of your hands onto a skein of yarn, you can set it and reuse that skein as a yarn mop many over many, many, many dyeing projects and layer and layer and layer color until you get something really, really dark and deep. And you can even have a skein for warm tones and cool tones if you don't want um, them to head towards sort of like a medium, uh, more brown territory. And you know, there, there's many things that you can do to conserve 
um, yarn while also like using up that leftover dye in a really fun way. So I hope that these uh, tips are helpful or useful and that I can encourage you to have some fun with color in yarn. Whether that is through dyeing yourself or by playing with hand dyed yarn, one of a kind yarns, and finding ways to turn it into something wearable or displayable or whatever it is that you love to create. So anyway, let's go check in on the yarn. It's been about 20 minutes and the color is this gorgeous blue. A really really lovely blue. Um, if I were to pick it up, the water looks a little grayish still. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is actually add some more vinegar. One, two, three, four, and let's pour it all in since I had vinegar in a cup from my day of dying. I may as well wash that cup. And I am gonna put the heat on super low. Now, normally I might turn it up until we hit more of a rolling boil um, or started to see more movement. We don't really wanna boil. I misspoke. But I would let it get a lot hotter. But I'm about to go film a live unboxing. And so I don't want this to get too out of control while I'm gone. So um, it's gonna be on super low for probably the next uh, 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, and then we'll check in on it again. A half hour later, we are just lightly steamy. I'm gonna turn off the heat now, but we're gonna leave the yarn in the pot overnight. And oof, it's very like, it's a little too purple to be a denim blue, but it's a beautiful dusty blue. And the water is actually looking completely clear, but there's no harm in letting it cool off in the pot and we will wash it in the morning. The next morning, the yarn was cool. The dye bath was clear last night, but we went and washed the yarn in some cool tap water using a tiny bit of dish soap just to make sure that any excess dye is no longer in the yarn. Then we rinsed out the soap, put the yarn through the spin dryer, and hung it up to dry. You may have noticed I spent a teeny bit of time at the beginning uh, making sure the skein wasn't tangled. If it is not easy, to untangle or get things a little ordered when wet, stop and wait until it's dry. It is much, much easier when it is dry. But I was curious with how tangled this might be and turns out not at all. The reusable nylon zip tie for the win because without that, probably would have been tangled. The finished yarn is an incredibly soft tonal. You can just barely see the light versus more dark that we have in here. And it is fun and subtle and beautiful at the same time. The color is a little bit more purple than a denim blue jean, but still sort of evokes a denim feeling all the same. Hand dyed semi-solid yarn are some of my favorites to work with. I like them so much more than a true solid because you get a little bit of variation and depth to the project, but it is still subtle enough that you could do lace or what have you. Actually, I feel like I have a lace shawl that is maybe a little bit more of a dusty purple than this. And it was a sparkle colorway, but this is evoking feelings for one of my favorite shawls that maybe I can finally pull out again this year because uh, now that my kids are older, I don't have to worry about them pulling and destroying it. Ooh, I can do more lace again, yay! But I digress. <laughs> the color shifts in here are subtle enough that it's hard to tell if it's light or shadow. And that kind of dimension to lace work, especially, is something I really, really, really enjoy. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. And if you're already subscribed, make sure your notifications are turned on. It's that bell icon, press it, and YouTube will let you know when I release a new video. I always release new content every Tuesday and Friday morning, but we also have lots of bonus streams and things along the way, and you don't want to miss any of it. For more leftover dyeing projects like this one, go and check out the Leave No Dye Behind Dyeing with Leftover Dyes playlist. 
Uh, I, again, sometimes I just like to dip the yarn in, but I like to play around and just let the materials I have left over work and think about the way I can combine them in a successful and somewhat cohesive way. Color mixing is not a strong suit of mine. I don't consider it a strength. I sometimes feel like I struggle picking colors that are new combinations and things like that, but it's always fun for me to see where a color goes when you mix things that might be not completely expected together. And I don't know, I like watching where it all ends up. If you've been a fan for Chemnitz for a while and want to help support the content on another level, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Uh, patrons can get a lot of really, really cool perks, and it's a really fun way to help support and contribute to the content that I am producing here. You can find links down in the video description. There's always lots of links to lots of places where you can find me in there, and it's worth taking a peek if you want to learn more um, about where you can find me or what I'm using and things like that. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.